showing you our fish thief. Coming in over your gate to Through steal your fish. If you know this fish thief, please contact your local authorities. Okay. I'm Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy. And I get to tour around and see what certified Aquascape contractors are doing. And I'm in Beaufort, South Carolina, the home of Forrest Gump. And we're with Trevor Stever out here. And we're going to go see, apparently, a pondless waterfall. Check it out. First thing I see when I turn the corner, absolutely beautiful. Look at this. So how old is this, Trevor? This is a year old. Okay. He had an old, I guess you call it a little pond, an attempt at a waterfall that wasn't working. So he called me in. We reused some of the stone that he had and then we rebuilt it and put lining in it. So this is absolutely spectacular at night. A pondless waterfall like this from Island Garden Features. What would a project like this entail in cost, man hours and labor? Yeah, this is a two day project, weather permitting, and we'll come in and redo everything. And with all the supplies, all the components, all the rock, all the landscaping that we put in this job, this is about $11,000 project. Mm -hmm. And you can scale it down a little bit more if you want to. But he has all the bells and whistles, like you said. He's got the light, maybe an automatic dosing system, and all the little things to keep it low maintenance. And basically, virtually no maintenance on a pondless. We install so many of these, and we have homeowners that leave and go up north for the summertime. They leave these for six months, and they leave them running. Wow. They're completely maintenance-free. And we actually add automatic water fill valves to them. Yep, yep. So it keeps it at a constant level all the time. So when they come back from being away for six months, they come back and all the birds are still there. The birds are still loving their garden. The birds are enjoying it. It's not like a sterile environment that they switched off for six months. It looked like a little volcano. It had like two, three rocks on it, an attempt at a stream, and then an old basin in the bottom, just a pile of rock. Mm -hmm. And then we excavated it, and we have a basin at the bottom where we put small aqua blocks. I think we've got five or six small aqua blocks in there. We've got the pondless vault. We've got a 3,000 gallon per hour pump flowing in here, and then we have a 2,500 biofold up at the top and an automatic fill valve. And then we have, I think, three or four three watt lights and a few one watt lights in this pond. Amen. One of the things that I love about your projects is the use of the plant material. You know, the goal you got sedums in here. Every project that we do, our main emphasis is to naturalize the it is much as possible so we try to use a lot of ground coverage they're going to cover the rock and then we end up collecting a lot of moss so you look on some of the rocks we have a lot of moss growing because where it's wet and where it's in the shade it'll just right. continue to spread we love doing water features like this this moss is about a year old eventually all the rocks will be covered in moss and it softens it up so instead of just being very rocky the greenery softens it up the moss softens right. it up the goal is that you don't want to know where the water ends and the land begins exactly. absolutely a spectacular pondless waterfall it's kind of the coolest thing that trevor said about this is customers leave them running year round even when they don't live here just because they want to support the wildlife in the area the birds have the plants continue to grow Trevor, this is just absolutely gorgeous. What's the population out here? Downtown Buford, Buford County. There's probably 200,000 people. Most in the whole are okay. Yeah, in the whole county. The county is pretty big. The town itself, the little city, is a lot smaller. Based on your accent, I'm going to guess you weren't born here. Well, I was from a little further south. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Otherwise known as South Africa. Yeah, that's right, South Africa. I want to put a link to my all-time favorite documentary movie that this man has never seen, and I want to see if any of you guys have ever seen it. Searching for Sugar. Man. It's from 2014. It won all sorts of awards and it's about apartheid in South Africa and this man had never heard of the movie until last night and he's from there. You lived through it. I did, but it was a little earlier than my time, that particular movie. I was about 10 years too young. That's most probably the reason I didn't hear about it. So I'm going to put a link down to Searching for Sugar Man and you guys tell me if you've seen it and if you watch it, let me know what you think about it. But it's a fantastic documentary. And I am super excited to go through this. It's going to be awesome. So how did you come up with your name or your company? Well, we live on an island mm -hmm. and at the time I wasn't strictly doing doing water features, but I was doing all types of landscaping, including water features. So I figured Island Garden Features would be a good name. Yeah, look, look at these beautiful uh, trees. Oak trees with the Spanish moss. And yeah, the limbs hang down to the ground and grow off the ground. I love it. Yeah, we don't see that in Chicago. It's on a peninsula of the bay. A lot of movies have been made here. Including Forrest Gump. The big Hill, Great Santini, Prince of Tide. Escape, look at this old pup. 
Hey, how you doing, buddy? And then this is uh, Trevor, and I guess your customer, huh, Trevor? Yeah. Hey, Tommy, the pond guy, Greg Whitstock. Hi, how you doing? Yes, look at this. So nice. And what's this guy's name? Diggums. Diggums. Yeah. Okay. How long has this uh, water feature been in? Well, there's a catch to this one. Okay. It was half the size originally. It was a smaller pond, and then we actually extended it. So the original pond we did like three or four years ago. Uh huh. Yeah. Tommy wanted a bigger, so we did that in January. We actually extended the same pond. It actually there used to be a matching tree right here. And the tree didn't make it. And the tree didn't make it. Good opportunity to expand yeah. the pond. Perfect. Yeah. So you know we're living now three, four years with an aquascape ecosystem water feature. What's it like? Pretty good. That's all I can say. <laughs> he loves it. it. Uh -huh. Every time I drive by you, they're sitting out here having cocktails. That's what it's all about, the lifestyle, right? right. You and your wife? Yep. Uh huh. How long have you lived here? Oh, 15 years. Okay. For somebody that's never lived with an aquascape water feature, how do you enjoy it? Well, just I enjoy fiddling with it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, this is kind of funny because yeah. when I saw this, you actually told me the story of this. You right. said that right after you built it, the water was dropping about a half inch a day, and you go ahead. This is your story. We did a rebuild on the pond, and everything was fine. We were good for about a month, had no problems. And Tommy called me, said, Trevor, we have a leak somewhere in the pond. Which happens. You know, yeah, which happens. But I. I'm like, there's no way there can be a leak because I spent every waking minute like trying to be perfect with this pond. So anyway, I tried to troubleshoot it like day after day after day. Came by in the evenings, checked it out. Could not figure out where it was leaking. So you saw no, normally it leaks where the water yeah, returns. Maybe, maybe running off the edge of a rock somewhere on yeah. the edge of the pond. It's never in the liner. Usually, yes. Never. It's usually at the edge of the rock. So anyway, it was driving me crazy and Tommy was out of town and I don't know that he knew it, but a lot of his friends come over here and... <laughs> sit at his table hey, in the evening and they just socialize around the pond because they love it so much. I was sitting here talking to them and I said, man, I just cannot figure this leak out. And then I looked at the spitter and we had originally put this spitter in for the dog. The only water that the dog drinks, you know, it only likes high quality H2O. <laughs> yeah. Well, the angle of this, when we originally put it in, it had this little teeth in it. Well, I guess one day the angle changed and his little teeth fell out. Well, the water was running down the back of the pipe all the way down here and you could never see it. Right. And that was where the leak was. Right, because it's two pipes. And so yeah. the water was dripping in down here, yeah. and it was going in Under the pipe the and then going into the ground. Right. So I just happened to put my hand here. I felt the water, and I'm like, oh, my Lord. <laughs> and I pulled this rock up, and then I could see where the water was leaking. Yes, that must have been a eureka moment. Oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was great. He claims you moved it. <laughs> Actually, what happened is uh, there was a different piece in the end. See how I have this clear pipe? Yes, sir. It's just stuck in there. But there was a black one that would not stay in there. It would almost work its way out. Yeah. So yeah. I changed it and I hadn't had any problems. So does the puppy still enjoy drinking from that? Yeah. Actually, he just yeah. drank out of it just before y'all put it up. Okay, so this is officially going to be remembered by me as the drinking fountain pond for the dog. Basically, when we came and did this project, because it was on the patio, we did most of this project by hand. We hand dug the pond. Originally it was just that first little circle in the front and we basically dug all the dirt out from here, used some of it to build the waterfall up, set up the biofalls up there, set up the skimmer and then dug a little terraces down for it and then put the underlayment liner, basically started rocking it in. And then we just went through our normal process of putting marginal plants in, filling it with water, give it a couple of days and we added some tropical water lilies to it. And they come back every year because mm -hmm. that time it's pretty mild. Yeah, it's been one of my favorite little patio ponds. So what would a project like this entail and what would it run from Island Garden Features? Uh, originally when we did this pond, it's about a $5,000 install for the small little pond that mm -hmm. we did. So if you had to do a total package of this pond right now, it must probably be closer to eleven, twelve thousand dollars mm -hmm. with all the stone. But that was starting from scratch. Yep. So has it been a good investment for your lifestyle? Yeah. I used to do a lot of offshore fishing and now this is where I fish. Amen. <laughs> Amen. With a cup of coffee or a cold one? A <laughs> cold one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You were saying this, the people just come walking in. I was just sitting here, and this guy comes in puffing a cigar, walking a little pooch, and sitting by the pod. Is this the routine here, brother? Yes, it is. That's because he invites me every time to come in. I think I'm living my retired life now. I don't think that's bad. Retired life is good. Amen. All right, what are you showing me here? 
I'm showing you our fish thief. Are you kidding me? This is his hoodie. He had just walked in the gate. So okay. Like, Holy cow. He'll turn around again. He's got like, looks like swim goggles on. Yeah, like he literally put a hoodie on like he knew that there might be cameras there. There he is. If you know this fish thief, please contact your local authorities. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for the hospitality. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's always a first. A fish thief. I mean, look at this. They had to go through that fence. They had to go all this over. So that takes some boldness. You know what? If you want to live the aquascape lifestyle, I don't want you stealing fish. I want you contacting a certified aquascape codger. We'll put a link below so you too can start living the aquascape lifestyle. You can't make this stuff up. I truly love my job.